Hi guys, um, this is Daniel, and uh, I was having some, some trouble writing the procedure that would create a factorial, uh, or write it, making a program to create the factorial, like in Udacity, the one that we're working on, on Unit 2, and so since I figured it out, I kind of had that light bulb go off, and now that I get it, I want to share what I got, and maybe there's some way that I can say it that wasn't, you know, said the way that you understand before, or maybe I can just light a little piece of it, and then you can get it, so, okay, so um, the first thing we're going to do is define our procedure. Factorial, I'll just put fact, it's easier that way, it's less typing. And we'll go down, and um, so it's going to indent for us. And the first thing we're going to do is define a new variable. I'm going to call it result. And the reason why, um, I, I understand now why it's important to name variables with significant meaningful names, not just like i or x or whatever. And it's because you want to, you want to understand later um, what those variables are for. And it helps if you, have, if you give them names that actually mean something. So we're initializing to 1, and I'm going to show you the reason why we're initializing to 1. And I'm pretty sure I get it now. I'm not like a, you know, you know, a master programmer now, but I get it. You know, this is kind of basic stuff anyway. So whenever you have a factorial, let's say you have 5 factorial, well that's really 5 times what, 3 times 2 times 1, right? So 1 is in every factorial. 1 is the last number you're going to multiply by in every factorial. Or, or you could even do the opposite way. 1 times 2 times um, 3 times 4 times 5, right? It's the same thing. So, oh, I, I skipped one here, didn't I? Wow, well, okay. I think you pretty much get the idea. But either way, um, 1 is going to be in every, in every type of factorial. It's the, it's the end result and it's what we're multiplying by at the very end of a factorial. So we want to make sure that that's in there because we want to have a good place to start. We want to know where we're starting at. Um, and you'll see why. It gets more clear as we create more of the more of the, of the program. So just stay with me here. So we're going to say result equals 1. And then we're going to say, okay, well, now we're going to create our loop. So wow, that's our wow loop. We're going to say while n, that's n is the number that we pass in, it could be any number. So while n is greater than or equal to 1. So what do we just do there? Um, this is what we're creating our loop, and we said while n, um, which let's say, let's say we're going to just do, let's say we're going to do, um, let's say we're going to do factorial 5. Well, when we pass in 5, 5 is n. So, you know, while 5 is greater than or equal to 1, well, that's true. So when that's true, we're going to indent there, and we're going to say um, we're going to say result, which is the result that we're looking for, um, is equal to result times n. So what do we just do? Um, result. Well, we see in the beginning we define result as one. So that's what we're going to start with. So we know that one result equals one. So it's one times n, which is Five. Remember, we're doing factorial five. So one times five, and now we're going to create our new result. So remember, it's kind of different in, in Python, I guess, in programming in general. I'm just learning, but basically, what I gather is that, like, you read this thing right to left. So we're creating a new variable uh, out of old variables. So we're saying one times five is now our new result, right? So now result equals five. So now we're going to go down, and we're staying in the same line of code. And now we're going to say n equals n minus 1. Okay? And the reason why we're doing that is because if you look here, n is the 5 that we're going to pass in. And every time, every successive time, it's n minus 1, n minus 1, n minus 1, n minus 1. And we have to create a variable that's going to allow us to systematically like tick off one at a time. So now what we do is we say um, return result. So what we just did there was we said, um, we said, well, while this is true, while n is greater than or equal to 1, run this line of code. And then when it's not, go to this. And so you can see, like, we don't want to have the code here. That's the first mistake I made. I had to return there. And when you do that, it doesn't work. See, let me show you what happens when you do that, when you run the code like that. So let's say we want to do factorial 5. Oh, that didn't work. Because the factorial 5 is obviously not 5. And, and just so that we're clear, the factorial 5 is 120. 
So, but let's, what would happen if we just took this code and then we said, we, we took the result and we put it in the correct spot. If I can spell it. Oh, the return result. The reason why we're doing that is because now that this code, this code runs as long as this while statement is true. So, when it's no longer true, which is when n is not greater than or equal to 1, um, when that's no longer true, we're going to say print, we're going to test it now, because now the return, when it's no longer true, we're just going to return the result. So now we're going to print factorial 5, 120. Boom, that's awesome. And um, so it worked. So another thing that I learned just browsing the internet is that you can import like libraries, I guess, in different functions. And I don't let me see if I do this right. Um, import math. I guess it's a library. And you can do math dot function five. Oh, did that work? Oh duh, not function. Import math math dot factorial now why couldn't we have just learned that way that would have been way easier but anyway <laughs> hope this little tutorial helped and you can see I made some mistakes so like I'm not a genius at this is not perfect already but I'm just working through it and you know hopefully this will help me understand and help you understand too thanks